Our worship this morning begins on page 299. Page 299. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And continuing at the bottom of the page, there is one body and one spirit. There is one Lord, God, all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one Father, all of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 133 which can be found in the leaflet in your bulletin and also on page 787 of the Book of Common Prayer. We shall recite Psalm 133 responsively by half verse. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. It is like fine oil upon the head. Upon the beard of Aaron. 
It is like the dew of Hermon. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so now they have been disobedient in order by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it was what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, and slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. But he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord God. of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So our readings this morning all have to do with the theme of forgiveness. In the first passage, um, we have Well, a few weeks ago, we talked about, oh gosh, brotherly love. They decided not to kill Joseph, but just sell him into slavery. (laughs) Oh, what loving brothers, right? And I told you then that that was not the end of the story, that there was more to come. And so today we kind of get the the closing scene, at least in in this season uh, of episodes about Joseph and his brothers. They've gone down to Egypt, and and everything between chapter one and what we get today uh, is is a wonderful back and forth uh, Middle Eastern storytelling to build the tension and build the anticipation until we come to this passage that we had today, where Joseph, who's, who's been masking his true identity from his brothers, just can't emotionally contain himself any longer. And he sends everyone out of the room and and just starts weeping and finally reveals who he truly is to his brothers, who you can imagine all these years later, the dismay and the fear, the embarrassment to say the least, of suddenly being face to face with the brother that they sold into slavery. And, and they're keeping their distance and they don't know what's coming next because certainly what they gave, they, they should in their own minds receive. And he says, Joseph says, come closer, come closer. And then he does this most amazing thing in the time that Joseph has been in Egypt, spent time as a slave, spent time in prison, and now is in this position of incredible power and authority, he has come to see, if you will, a larger perspective on what has happened to him in his life. And he says to his brothers, don't be afraid. I can now see and understand that God sent me here, not you, because God knew that the time would come when I would be able to save your lives and the lives of our people because of the position that I now occupy. And slowly, his brothers, you can almost feel the tension go out of them as their minds begin to comprehend that, yes, this is their brother, the same brother, Joseph, and that he has forgiven them, and that indeed he wants them to bring his father and the whole tribe and come down to Egypt so that their lives may be preserved for generations to come. Incredible story of genuine forgiveness between human beings. 
So now in Paul's letter to the Romans, you may remember a few weeks ago, we had that passage of scripture where uh, it talks about those whom God foreknew, he also foreordained. And that passage, as we talked about then, has often been used to say, well, the Jews are out. They messed up. They don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. That was the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. Now we're in the years of the New Covenant, the New Testament. We're saved. They blew it. And Paul demolishes that argument in this letter to the Romans because apparently what was going on in the community at that time was this exact question. We believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We Gentiles believe that Jesus is the Messiah. So what about them? What about the Jews? Maybe they're on the outs now. And Paul says, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. And he says, I'm an Israelite. I'm a Jew. I'm a descendant of Abraham a member of the tribe of Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin was the tribe from which the Messiah was to come. He's saying, I of all people should know the answer to this concern that you are having. And then he says very clearly, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. And as I said a few weeks ago, who did God not foreknow? You knew me when I was still in my mother's womb. Who did God not foreknow? And then he goes on to say, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable or are irrevocable. They can never be taken back. When God makes a promise, it is for eternity. So he says once, just as once you Gentiles were disobedient to God, you've now received mercy. And now that they are disobedient through not believing that, the, that Jesus is the Son of God, now they too are able to receive God's mercy in the same way that you have received God's mercy. In Jesus, as the Messiah, God completely leveled the playing field. None of us are outside the walls of the city of God. All of us are restored to communion with God and with each other through the grace and gift of God. So what does that mean when we go on then to this gospel passage from Matthew? And I love that the two stories come one right after the other, boom, boom. So we get the first one where Jesus is teaching to the Jewish people, to Jews, and he's saying, look, it's not what goes into the body that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of your body that makes you unclean. And of course, people are confused by that because that's what a parable is for. A parable is meant not to give you the easy answer, but to get you thinking. And so, of course, Peter says, well, you know, could you just, you know, like, what does it mean? What? <laughs> And so Jesus kind of lays it out, and through the gospel, lays it out for us as well. That it, it's not about taking certain actions, using certain dishes, eating these kinds of foods or not eating these kinds of foods together. It's not about those traditions of how to live our lives. It's about something deeper. It's about what's in our heart and how what is in our heart is brought forth and made incarnate in our daily lives. That's great. The very next scene, Jesus and his disciples go to, we're told, the region of Tyre and Sidon, which is outside of the area where the Jewish people are living. He and the disciples are now in a land of Gentiles, you and me. And word has gotten all over that part of the world about Jesus. And this interesting thing happens. A Canaanite woman. So the Canaanites infamously were not monotheistic. They didn't believe in one God. They believed in many gods. So this Canaanite woman 
approaches him and cries out, have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. She calls him Lord, and she calls him son of David. Son of David is a messianic title. None of the Jews are calling him son of David, certainly not in public. Son of David, Messiah, have mercy on me. Heal my daughter. And he's silent. And she keeps at it, as any mother would, right? And the disciples are like, tell her to get out of here. She keeps yelling and she's making a scene and she's calling you the Messiah. Finally, Jesus says something that sounds so harsh, especially given what he's just been teaching. It's not right to take the children's food and give it to the dogs. So it's important for you to have some cultural context here. Jesus has just said to his disciples, before saying this very harsh thing, he says to his disciples, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, I was only sent to the Jews. And now he says to the woman, it's not right to take the children's food. I am the bread of life. It's not take, right to take the children's food and give it to the dogs. Cultural context. For the Jews, Dogs were unclean. And why were dogs unclean? Because dogs were scavengers. They ate dead things. They took things into their bodies that were unclean, and that made them unclean. So it would never occur to a faithful Jew to have a dog as a pet, much less have a dog in the house. The Canaanite culture was more like ours. They loved dogs, saw them as companions, useful for hunting and guarding, and uh, they would have them in their houses. And so the, the literal translation of the woman's response to Jesus after he says it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs, the literal translation of what she says in response is, Yes, Lord, but even the puppies under the table get the crumbs that fall from the table. How many of you, parents, or maybe your own childhood memories, remember feeding the broccoli or maybe the peas under the table to the dog? Even the puppies under the table eat the crumbs that fall from the children's plates. And something interesting happens here because this is a little glimpse for us into the human nature of Jesus, the Messiah. We talk a lot about his divine nature, which is all over the Gospels. Here we have an insight, along with the time he got angry and the time he wept, this is another key place where we have a glimpse into the fullness of his humanity. Because in this moment, Jesus has an experience of an expansion of his understanding of who he is as the Messiah. Not just for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he is the Messiah for the whole world. And he commends the woman for her faith and heals her daughter. So what does all this have to do with us? There is the reassurance, certainly, that regardless of our own background, Maybe we came from dysfunctional families. Maybe we still have dysfunctional families. Maybe we came to faith late in life. Maybe we were baptized as infants, like Olivia is going to be baptized shortly. Maybe we have gone through or are going through times of great doubt 
in regards to God. Does God really exist? Does God really care about me? Maybe I've blown it. Maybe I'm outside. Maybe God has revoked the promise that he made through Jesus Christ. All of these passages are reassurances to us of the incredible love and grace of God in forgiving us exactly as we are. Lovely when we change and amend our lives, but that's not ultimately the requirement to be loved by God, to be forgiven by God, and to be seen and embraced by God as beloved children, eternal members of the family. So if that's all true, why bother with baptism? What's the point of that? If we've been forgiven, if the Canaanites are already beloved children of God, well, why does it matter that we get baptized? For this, you have to go back to Genesis. That thing called the fall, when everything fractured and broke. God, it is very clear from scripture, deeply desires to have a genuine, intimate family relationship with each one of us, a relationship of love. Anybody here ever managed to make someone love them? That's where free will comes in. God's free will desire is to love us and to be loved in return and be in relationship with us. God will never force that. That's why we have been given free will, so that we may choose to accept that love and that we may choose to love in response so that we may be in relationship with God and with each other. So here's what happens in baptism. In baptism, if you're an adult, you're making this choice for yourself. If you are Olivia, who's only a few months old, her parents are making this choice for her, which she will then have the free will to confirm at a later point in her life. Baptism is the moment when we say to God, yes, please, I am so grateful for your love. I accept it. I love you too. And what that does is that free will choice that we make for baptism opens the floodgates, sets God free to be at work in our lives, guiding us, protecting us, watching over us, healing us, walking within us, living in us, living through us in ways that otherwise God is not free to do because God has chosen to give us the power and the authority of having a free will. So Kyle and Alexandra are giving Olivia an incredible gift today. They are giving her the gift of God's freedom to be present in her lives and at work in her life in new and wonderful ways. And that is true for each and every one of us who has on our own or through our parents said yes to God. Amen. 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 And now, um, Olivia and her parents and her godparents can come forward. And I'll start giving you page numbers again. So we're, we are on page 301. Hi, sweet pea. It's a nice smile. I'm really hoping she smiles like this in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys ready? <clears throat> okay. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present. I present Olivia Kyle Walker. 
receive the sacrament of that. And now on page 302. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help Olivia to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. This question is for all of you. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support Olivia in her life in Christ? We will. Then let us join with Olivia's parents and godparents who are committing themselves to Christ and committing Olivia to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant, page 304. Please stand if you are able. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. Let us now pray for Olivia, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to um, take our time going to the baptismal font because John has to bring the camera downstairs. And I think McCabe needs to come in so she can see the baptism. So we're just going to wander back. <laughs> uh, any children or any of you who can't see over the tall person who it turns out was sitting behind you in the pew, uh, feel free to come out in the aisle, come up, come as close as you want to come so you can see what's going on. 
Uh, and I'm so glad you came because you are just the right height <laughs> to, would you hold the book for me? Thank you. So what you're going to do is you're going you're gonna to pretend you're a book holder like that. And I, and I put my glasses on and we'll hope for the best. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay. All right, for those, oh, yep, you're going to need to be closer, sorry, <laughs> even with glasses. Um, we are on page 306, page 306. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We, we thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring to him, into his fellowship, those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, let's see if you still like me. Yeah. Hello, honey bun. Yes, yes, yeah. Hello. All right. Want to come see me? Want to come see me? Ooh. Hi. This is Mama. Hi, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. She has the sweetest smile. Yes, you do. Okay, you look. <laughs> She's looking. At, <laughs> keeping her eye on her parents. Olivia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, oops, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes. Ooh, you did so great. You did so great. Yes. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Good job. Good job. We won't ask Olivia to hold this. <laughs> All right, we are on page 308. Page 308, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed up on this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain Olivia, O oh Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Olivia, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. All together, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. God's peace, Olivia. God's peace. I can't get my finger back. <laughs>
God's peace. <laughs> there we go. God's peace. Thank you so much. You were awesomely perfect. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Thank you. And you can blow that up. <laughs> I'll give you the box that it comes in. Um, every year on the anniversary of her baptism, you can light that. It's kind of like a birthday candle. Oh, cool. Yeah. And Godmother. And this is Olivia's baptismal certificate. And if you ever lose that, that's the pretty copy for framing, but, but we have her baptism recorded in the parish register, so we can always photocopy if you need. Okay. Yeah, you all, you're supposed to be you know, exchanging the peace with each other. <laughs> yeah. You have amazing handwriting. Oh, thank you. Here we go. Um, she has a certain equanimity, a very like, okay, it's not going in my eyes, so, okay. <laughs> so, um, you have a lot of family here today. Uh, would, would one of you be willing to stand up and introduce your family members who are here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Kyle, Kyle and Alexandra were married here in the spring of tw uh, 21? June of 20, 22. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> that Kyle? <laughs> Kyle, that's why we put the date in. Yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm allowed to be fuzzy. You're it's not. <laughs> um, well, to introduce our family, I'll start with Olivia's godparents, who are my brother Shay and sister Mahan, uh, my parents Joey Hart and Bob Walker, my father in law Josh Hurley, um, my aunts that are amazing, Margaret <laughs> and Nia, on uh, uh, my wife's side, uh, Uncle Marty, uh, and on my side, I have my aunt Susie and Uncle Lee. Uh, who else? And my Aunt Jill, of course, my cousin Kenzie, and then we have Danny, who is the cousin's cousin, and the boys here, uh, B and Nico, and our friends from Chicago, Christine, Henry, and Jean, who did such a great job with the book. Oh, Chris, of course. <laughs> oh, all of you are going to get happy during the entire thing. <laughs> And one certain parent. Um, I think that's it. That was impressive. <laughs> that was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as you know, John uh, videos our services for us, and then a link is sent out to parishioners. So, Kyle and Alexandra, you will get the link for this service and then you know everybody else's emails in your family so just forward the the link onto them and they'll be able to um, have their own copy of the baptism to enjoy Thank yeah you. yeah you are welcome any um, announcements or news that you need to share with each other this morning lucy just a quick reminder, we were doing such a fabulous job of paper recycling. Just a look through the blue bin. You can put your bullets into the blue bin on the way out. Uh, please do not put anything other than paper in the blue bins, because then I have to get out by myself, with my hands, and people have thrown plastic cups and used tissues in there. So please, I was close, I know. So please don't do that. I love you, but I love you more than the paper. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other announcements or news this morning? Rally Sunday is coming up on September 10th, which is fast approaching. 
So remember on that day, this, you don't have to worry about this as much as the folks from the eight o'clock service. There will be one 1015 service that day, followed as always by cookout and just a lot of fun. So plan to be there. Any birthdays or anniversaries being celebrated this week? It's always the spouse that tells. <laughs> CJ, come on up. CJ, I lay my hands upon you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, holy and living God. We give you thanks for the gift to us all of your beloved child, CJ. And as he begins a new year of life in your service, we ask you to pour out your grace upon him, that in his daily life he may ever see more clearly and fully your presence and your action at work in the world about him and in his own life. We ask for blessings and grace and all that he needs to be supplied. And we ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy you. birthday. Um, Fran Sarkissian has been um, coming up with large bags of yarn for the folks who are knitting and crocheting prayer shawls. So thank you, Fran. And that's, that's kind of by way of saying if you are at a church sale or someplace uh, where people have yarn that they don't know what to do with, we are happily receiving donations. And I think we, we better start blessing the yarn even before it's made into prayer shawls. It's a wonderful gift, and thank you, Fran, so much for what you've done with that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
our worship this morning continues on page 369. Page 369. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his love he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed, and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us worship peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
the prayer on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore.